Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Okay, uh, as per usual, a big thank you to everybody that commented and liked last week's episode of the show. Rest assured, there will be no dodgy accents this week, I can tell you for a fact, because um, my American accent often seems to end up sounding more like an Australian one, so I shall not be doing that. Um, anyway, before we go on any further you may well notice the Rush t-shirt no that's got nothing to do with Canada today but it's just to pay homage to um, the late Neil Peart uh, the drummer in my my favorite band who unfortunately passed away uh, a few days ago so um, I don't know whether Mr Peart was into his whiskey or not I think he liked his wine but um, I don't know whether he was into his whiskey or not so but we'll be raising a dram to arguably the greatest rock drummer on the face of the planet, or was. Um, anyway, so that's uh, by the by. But anyway, so uh, today's tasting. Well, um, Nathan uh, uh, from uh, a company called N10 Bourbons kindly sent me these samples uh, before Christmas, and uh, obviously it was always my intention to do an episode of the show with them. So it's just been a case of waiting for the uh, the right time to sort of uh, to do that, and. Um, today is indeed the right time to do it so um now the two distilleries that, that we have here uh were sagamore spirits and the wilderness trail distillery I, i've never heard of before and um i guess there's a lot of distilleries cropping up around the world <laughs> indeed i've never heard of it either so it's it's always you always get a bit of a free sort of excitement when it's when it's something brand spanking new you know um, I mean, you know, when you get sent new releases from various distilleries or independent bottlers, you, you know, you have an idea of the style of the distillery or the what have you. And so, yes, it's always nice to taste these things. Um, th there's always that sort of element of, of, of knowing or at least having an idea of, of what you're going to be tasting but when of course you've never tasted the product from a particular distillery at all you've just got absolutely no idea and it, it, it's a bit of a thrill it has to be said when, when you're actually tasting something completely and utterly brand spanking new you know um, so like I said big thank you to Nathan uh, for sending me the samples for today's episode of the show um, right so like I said the two distilleries so the Wilderness Trail distillery is a distillery based in Kentucky uh, was founded or began operation in 2013 by a pair of guys called Shane Baker and Pat Heist um, and they uh, apparently have a background in uh, in the industry as consultants and apparently yeast and optimization services um, so they they know about their yeast and this is quite an interesting sort of part of the production process because um, they uh, use a, a process called um, sweet mash uh, instead of the usual or relatively usual sour mash process. Now um, now I know what sour mash is, I mean it's the spent lees for want of a better word from the, the previous fermentation which is then used uh, to um, kind of kickstart the next fermentation. I know that the, the, the acidity in the, um, the sour mash tends to sort of regulate the pH uh, of the, uh, the, the, the fermentation. It also helps, um, I believe, with um, big sort of with bacteria infections and all that kind of stuff. Um, from what I can understand about the sweet mashing process, it is just pretty much a straightforward fermentation using uh, you know live yeast um, or um, normal yeast as far as I'm aware so um, it's just a, a normal fermentation so uh, some people seem to claim that um, the sour mash process tends to sort of have more continuity of style um, but I mean the thing is if the sweet mash is pretty much as per uh, a Scottish distillery would do then you know surely you can control the parameters shall we say of your um your regime to keep, create a continuous style um so um basically yeah so what they're saying is that the i mean a lot of bourbons and uh, jack daniels for example claims to be a sour mash whiskey but you wouldn't know it you, i mean i tend to find with sour mash whiskies rightly or wrongly whether it's a in your head because it's a sour mash that there is a slightly sour fruit kind of character to the uh, um to the finished product 
Um, and according to um, uh, Shane Baker and Pat Heist, the reason they use a sweet mash is that um, it brings out more flavours from the grain, more sweeter flavours. And um, we shall see when, when, when we get to uh, tasting if that is indeed the uh, correct, uh, well, if that is what indeed happens. So, um, basically, they distill, uh, actually, they triple distill, which I don't know if is usual uh, for American whiskies. Um, certainly, the, they initially distill in a 40 foot Vendome uh, column still. Um, for those of you that don't know, Vendome is to the American whiskey industry that Forsyth's is to the Scottish whiskey industry. They are the go to uh, company for building, um, uh, building your stills. So they use a 40 foot tall uh, Vendome column still and then um, uh, and then basically double distilled through a 230 gallon copper doubler. So it seems to me obviously triple distilled. Uh, they, uh, I believe since then they've increased the, uh, the size of their, uh, their, their, uh, their pot still to increase production and um, they basically uh, age the spirit in uh, number four charred barrels and um, the plan is I believe that they mature their bourbons for at least a minimum of four years with the aim of releasing uh, them at around about between six and eight years of age so uh, what we have here is, is uh, two bour bourbons and a straight rye um, so that will be quite interesting the second property we'll be looking at is what is called Sagamore Spirits and based in uh, Baltimore in Maryland. Uh, now the distillery is owned apparently by the uh, CEO of um, Under Armour, a chap called Kevin Plank, who I believe is a native of uh, Maryland and um, I believe that uh, uh, Under Armour's HQ is, in, is based in, um, in, in Baltimore. Um, I don't really know an awful lot about, about Baltimore apart from their NFL football team seems to be playing rather well at the moment and uh, they beat mine mm, yes uh, well we won't go into that will we uh, so uh, but as far as far as I'm aware uh, I don't know what uh, how much in day-to-day -day activity Kevin Plank uh, actually has I'm pretty certain that he's doing a number of other things uh, and I, I believe that this is all part of his um, grand scheme for regenerating um, Baltimore I think uh, uh, and it's not it's nice that you know that uh, a multi-millionaire businessman is kind of giving back to you know the the area that he came from so uh, anyway so but the, again the distillery is apparently being run by a chap called Larry Ebersvold who's apparently known as the uh, uh, the godfather of rye didn't know that um, and um, uh, apparently uh, Larry spent a number of years, I think 40 odd years, working for Seagram's and then on to uh, uh, MGP or um, uh, Midwest Grain Products in Indiana. And here's the link, because the distillery itself has actually only been in production since 2017, so their spirit isn't actually ready. I believe, again, that they uh, are planning to obviously in due course release their own spirit and so the spirit that we have here uh, in the glasses is actually sourced from uh, uh, MGP so now a lot of people have issues with that they're saying it's a bit disingenuous to basically go to another distillery uh, get them to distill your, your, your product and you just stick a label on it but for me personally, I would much rather a distillery do that than basically rush their own product out um, and bottle it before it's ready for bottling and all that kind of stuff. I mean, obviously, there's going to be a change, one would imagine. It might even be quite subtle in, in, the, in the, the whiskey by the time they've, uh, you know, done their own whiskey. But even so... Um, it, uh, the, the production again sounds quite interesting they, 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 they've coined this term uh, a Maryland style now I don't know whether that exists in history or whether they've just made that up on the fly but apparently um, what it uh, is is they go to MGP and they say right okay we need a blend of uh, a high rye mash uh, bourbon um, or rye and a low rye content 
um, and sort of they then blend the two together and you end up I believe or so they tell me uh, a sort of sweeter softer style of rye so we're not talking kind of uh, Knob Creek style hard rye um, we're talking sort of slightly softer um, so it could be could be really interesting um, apparently the the spirit is is um, shipped to the uh, uh, all the barrels are shipped to the Sagmore uh, distillery where um, it's that they actually blend there rather than sort of doing it at MGP so they're, they're basically sort of taking the raw materials and, and putting it together at, uh, at their own distillery and uh, um, you know like I said I've got no issue with 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 that whatsoever and to, to me what matters is the juice in the glass so um, I think that's um that's enough waffle. Like I said, if you um, want to find out more about the uh, these two particular distilleries, there is information out there online. And I think I've um, I'm getting a bit dry, so I think I need to taste some. Whiskey. But before we can actually taste some whiskey, oh God, I better actually tell you what I will be tasting. So right, like I said, three from uh, the Wilderness Trail Distillery. We're going to kick off with their uh, small batch uh, straight bourbon bottled in bond. <sighs> uh, okay, I'll take a quick um, breather there. Um, so basically, it's a minimum of two years old, obviously, um, and uh, bottled at 50%, so to fit all the criteria. It is dis uh, the, the mash bill uh, for the particular that particular bottling is 64% corn, 24% heritage rye and 12% barley. Second one we're going to be looking at is the um, single barrel straight bourbon bottled in bond. Whew, that's a godful. Um, again, the obviously the uh, mash bill is exactly the same as the uh, small batch bourbon. And the third bottling we'll be looking at is the um, uh, straight rye cask strength uh, and that has been bottled at 56% obviously the mash bill deviates slightly uh, in that it's only 33% corn 56% heritage rye which is quite a lot of rye and 11% barley and a reasonable amount of barley as well as to be said <coughs> excuse me so that's um, that's the um, Wilderness Trail Distillery. So Sagmore Spirits, uh, the first bottling of theirs we'll be looking at is what they've called their Signature Rye. This is a four to five year old uh, rye spirit. Don't know what the overall um, blend is because like I said it's a, it's, it's a combination of uh, a high rye mash and a low rye mash but so uh, I don't have that information um, and it is bottled at 41.5%. Uh, second bottling we'll be looking at is what they call their double oak rye. So again, this is a four or five year old spirit which spends uh, about four years in obviously new charred oak casks uh, before being finished for a year in new, uh, new oak casks. Okay, um, so yeah, a lot, expecting a lot of oak there to be honest with you. Um, interesting. Um, I mean, you often tend to find, shall we say, slightly sort of older spirits get rejuvenated in new oak. Um, but we shall see what uh, what this is like. It's bottled at uh, 48.3%, so um, no shrinking violet. And the last bottling from Sagmore Spirits is their cask strength rye. Uh, this, again, is about four or five years old and is bottled at 56.1%. So there you go. Now I am really dry and I really need to taste some whiskey. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so we're going to kick off with the uh, small batch straight bourbon bottled in bond. Let's see what the nose gives us. Straight off the bat, lots of corn, sweet corn, quite fluffy shall we say and that's a technical term um, so initially it seems that this whole sweet uh, mashing business uh, does indeed give you a sweeter more corn lead um, kind of nose and um, I mean because when you think about it 24% rye 
is actually quite a high rye content. Uh, I mean, ordinarily you would expect, you would call a high rye content, you know, 15 to 20 percent. And um, the rye is there, it's in the background, it's got a, a little bit of spiciness, but I'm getting a lot more toasty oak. Um, and I'm just getting a lot of sweet barley. It is very sweet um, in relative terms, shall we say. Um, there's a touch of, of honey, possibly a little bit of a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of pepper. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a pleasant nose. Um, but like I said, for something that's got a, quite a lot of rye, the rye really is kind of quite suppressed, shall we say. See what that's like. Now the rye does come through on the finish. It's got a, a nice spiciness. Again, it kind of kicks off with a lot of a lot of corn, a lot of sweet corn. Um, touch of toffee, a little bit of honey. Quite a sweet finish as well. Um, it's pleasant. It's not the most complex of bourbons that I've ever come across. And um, I mean, we'll get into um, when I when I sort of sum these up. But the, the, it's the, the issue. I, no, I'm not going to. Well, we'll wait until we get to the summing up. Bit. Right, okay, so let's move on to the uh, single barrel uh, straight bulb and let's see what those give us on this end, shall we? It's a little crisper, it's a little, there's more charred oak. Um, it's a little bit more rye character as well. Um, but, and it's got a, a bit of a herbalness, but it's... It kind of falls into that kind of trap is the wrong word, but the thing with a single barrel bourbon I often tend to find, and that and it's the big issue I have with um, Four Roses single barrel bottlings. Not that I get to taste them every day, but um, they taste like a component part. Um, and and this after tasting the small batch, this does taste like or smell like initially. Um, like a component and it's actually not very corny at all the, the rye is a lot more noticeable um, but again it's relatively relatively straightforward in actual fact it's kind of you know but anyway let's uh, let's see what that's like A little bit more of the corn character actually on the palate. The the rye still is re a lot more noticeable. Um, it's a little grippy, a little spicy, a little herbal. There's a slight astringency on the finish, um, which is not unpleasant. But again, it just kind of after having taste, tasted the small batch, it just feels more like a component and um yeah i mean it's it's okay um but it's just it's not kind of making me go oh my god that's incredible you know it's there's absolutely nothing wrong with it at all quality is, is relatively good it it's the price that it all boils down to at the end of the day or the retail price shall we say um and um like i said i will explain when we get to the the summing up <clears throat> Right, okay, so let's move on to the straight rye. So this is at cast strength, 56%. Now, apparently, from what I was reading, um, they, they, uh, they, they basically put their spirit, their rye spirit, into cask at 100 proof, which is 50%. Um, so this is 56%. So I'm guessing that this was stored in a pretty warm warehouse for the, the alcohol to raise by 6%. Now, either I'm wrong, and I've, I've read the information wrong, but 
Raising by 6%, that's a hell of a jump. I mean, <laughs> how much of the water was evaporated to get an extra 6%? But anyway, um, let's see what the, the nose gives us. Again, quite a lot of charred oak. Um, a little bit of... The, the, the rye character is quite mentholated and I'm getting a sort of a cigar leaf, a sort of a tea leaf kind of character. Um, it's got an edginess, there's an astringency. It's it's not as hard as, as, as say, um, uh, Knob Creek, um, but it's not as soft as, say, Bullet, for example. It's kind of somewhere in the, in the middle. Um, it's... It's got a pleasant intensity um, and a sort of, you know, a nice edginess. There's a nice interplay between the oak uh, and the slightly more uh, astringent rye character. Um, so it's not unpleasant. It's not hugely complex. Um, but it's, like I said, it's pleasant. Let's see what the, the palette's like. Kicks off with the oak, again charred oak, but that herbal, astringent, green spice, green pepper kind of rye kind of comes in really quite quickly. Um, obviously, um, being bottled of uh, that, that ABV certainly seems to sort of um, impact the finish. It's a little masked. Um, it's got a nice spiciness. It's got a bit of a bit of Mari kind of character which is hinting at sort of youthfulness um, so I would guess this is probably closer to four years old than it is to to five or six or um, I'm going to put a little drop of water with it I don't really think it needs um, uh, any water I mean 56% is not really that much is it at the end of the day um, but we'll just see what uh, what that does to it It's a little sweeter now, a little bit more oak, um, a little bit more cigar leaf. It's a, a little bit more simpler, shall we say. Um, mm, buddy cat. Oh, buddy cat likes some American whiskey. Um, what do you think? No, just more fuss. Um, anyway, let's see what parts I have. Again, it's a bit, mm, it's a bit simple. It's a bit kind of, it's emphasised the youthfulness. In actual fact, I'm getting a lot more of that rose petal mild, and I don't mind that. I, I often pick that up in in bourbons because of the fact that um, they're generally bottled at a lot younger age, and and the spirit quite maybe hasn't quite sort of matured enough to sort of lose that that sort of note. Um, and you know, I suppose you can argue it does sort of add to the character. Um, but again, it's a bit simplistic, it has to be said. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's not too bad. Right, OK, so on to the first bottling from um, Sagamore Spirit. So this is the signature rye bottle at 41.5%. Subtle. Um, Lightly herbal rye, um, some violets, um, toasty oak, cinnamon, pepper. It's subtle. Um, it's not sort of going to smack you in the face and say, hell, I'm rye. It's, it's quite gentle, quite elegant. Um, it's easy going. Um, it's a, a, a nice warm sort of spiciness to it. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, it's 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 a, it's, a, it's pleasant. Um, I mean, I suppose when you think about it, you know, you it's like sort of somebody creating a gin and sort of going to Thames or uh, whoever and say, look, this is my this is what I want to use botanical wise. Can you distill it for me? And it's essentially a case of you know, well, you know, they've been distilling for donkey's years, just like MGP. Um, you, you know, the quality of the spirit ain't going to be 
be poor, you know, um, and um, it just proves it. The quality of the spirit is 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 pretty good. Um, so that's like. Quite soft, silky. I mean, I'm having to sort of kind of ignore the fact that I've just tasted a 56% um, uh, spirit and I've now gone down to a 41%. So it does taste a little um, watery, but that's that's my perception uh, rather than the, the actual product itself. Um, it's 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 elegant it's elegant it's delicate it's got a, a herbal rye kind of character um it's got a little bit of spice it's relatively straightforward again there's no fireworks uh i mean possibly that is because it's bottled at 41.5 um and again i know what i have to retail that for and you know, well, like i said we'll we'll talk about that in the end Right, okay, so uh, let's move on to the double oak rye. Now, I have a funny feeling, didn't Jim Bean do something of a similar kind of... And then that was... Well, yeah. Um, and they also did that... What was that one they did? Um, Devil's Cut? Oh, dear God. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> we're not here to talk about Jim Bean, are we? Uh, let's see what those give us on this end. Oh, that's a mountain of oak. I mean, that is really oaky. Um, lots of toffee and cream and grilled nuts and ch and charred oak and I mean toffee nutmeg. I mean, this is it's all it's all kind of you know oak derivatives. Um, there's a bit of rye underneath all of that. I will give it that. Um, but the elegance and delicacy of, of the signature rye is just kind of lost under all that oak. I mean, you know, if you're going to create an elegant, delicate style of spirit, then why pummel it to death with bloody oak? You know, it's the same with sort of, you know, Ockintosh and Triple Distilled, Lovely Light Spirit you know, whacking the hell out of it with, with, with loads of sherry. It's like, why? You know, uh, and I don't, I don't get it. I don't, it does, it, it, to me, it just sort of like defies logic, should we say. Um, but, oak is nice and clean, no, no off notes, no grubbiness. You know, if you like lots of oak, then, well, you know, you're going to like this. Let's see what the parts are. Again, lots of oak, lots of toffee, uh, lots of vanilla, lots of charred oak. Um, the rye comes through initially with a little bit of spice and then kind of builds with a little bit of a more greener intensity uh, and, a, and um, a stringency, shall we say. Um, there's a little bit of, of cinnamony spice, but again, I just kind of... It's just sort of oak, it's a lot of oak. I mean, yes, all right, the spirit does tend to come through more than it does on the nose, but um, it just, to me, I just don't see the, the, the point of it. And I know that, I, I think pretty much all of these, have, um, I mean, this is uh, looking at the, um, um, this has won gold medals and all sorts, you know, so so obviously somebody likes it. Um, maybe maybe I'm just the exception to to uh, to the rule. Um, but personally, I don't really rate that. Okay, so moving on to the final uh, bottling of today. This is the cast strength rye, so bottle of fifty six point one percent. Let's see what the nose goes. Yeah, that's quite nice actually. Um, 
it's quite quite chocolatey. Um, I'm getting more darker, spicier rice. It's got more intensity. Um, and you know what? That's more like it. That's more what I want to see. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, uh, for high proof or bottled in bond or whatever you want to call it, rye whiskies, um, I personally think the benchmark is the Rittenhouse rye produced at Heaven Hill. And, you know, this is kind of approaching it, in, in, in essence, and um, getting a little bit of menthol, some charred oak, but the oak is kind of sitting behind the rye, the rye is the kind of the star, and that's what I want. I want my, my rye whiskey to say, I am a rye whiskey, you know, I don't want it to say, I have been aged to hell in bloody um, fresh oak. Um, now, is this worth 75 quid is, of course, the, on, the, uh, the, the question that you have to ask. And that's a hell of a lot of money to fork out for, for a rye. And, um, hmm, so the power side. Oh, that's got some intensity. That's got some lovely rye intensity. I'm um, guessing that not only is this car strength, um, we'll actually we'll, we'll we'll hold that that thought for just one moment because I will put a little drop of water with it. But tasting it neat, it comes across with a higher like it feels like a higher rye content. Um, it's got that sort of slightly mentholated, quite spicy, slightly peppery kind of rye. It's got a Ooh, it's got a bit of a kick to it, you know, um, and it says, I'm a rye whiskey, but it does have a bit of an elegance to it. It is not brutal by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'm going to put a little drop of water with it, and I will attempt to be very judicious, as there's not very much left in the glass, um, just to see whether this kind of comes back to more like the signature rye. It does, it's... It, I think this is a slightly different blend of the um, of, of, of the the mash bills, and um, I I think it's a slightly higher because I'm still getting that lovely rye intensity. There's got a it's kind of brought forward the oak a little bit. I'm getting a little bit more citrus, a little bit more tangerine, orange. Um, mm, I mean. I think of the three products, the three bottlings from um, Sagmore Spirits, this is the more interesting um, for me personally. Whether, of course, it's worth 75 quid or not is open to debate. But anyway, um, let's see what I'll pass on there. I'm actually quite disappointed by that uh, with, with a little bit of water. It's all become a bit astringent, a bit bitter. Um, the finish seems to have just, just disappeared. Um, it really has kind of gone south somewhere. I mean, it's um, so neat. Yes, I think that is absolutely stunning with water. Right, okay, so that's some today's episode of the show. So, um, again, once again, a big thank you to Nathan from uh, N10 Balpins for the samples for today's episode of the show. My summation will not come as a surprise to him because I've already spoken to him and explained um, the issues. Well, not the issues. I, at the end of the day, both sets of spirits are pleasant. They're okay. I mean... Um, like I said, I think the, the Sagmore Spirits rye or cast strength rye is probably their, their more interesting bottling. Um, the, um, the, uh, the, the biggest issue I think I have is, like I said, is with pricing. Now, um, the, I like them, they're okay, but like I said, it's... 
Right, OK, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Um, first, a big, big thank you to Nathan from N10 Bourbons for the samples. Um, OK, so uh, let's let's talk about Wilderness Trail. Um, they're, they're OK. Um, they're, there's no real fireworks. They're, they're perfectly acceptable. Uh, the biggest problem, like I said, is, is pricing, and this... I've already explained this to Nathan. Um, the fact that I would have to sell the, um, the the sort of entry level for for sort of sixty nine quid is just nowhere near um, value for money, in my personal opinion. Now you can buy these from you know who that begins with M, um, and you can get that for just under fifty quid. Now. The thing is that sort of them that begin with M and the other uh, native spirits online who I've never heard of um, that are doing it for the same kind of price is that I'm guessing they're on, well I, I know Master Malt are obviously an on, online retailer and they can afford to basically put on a very small margin. Um, now we have a shop, we have more overheads, I, I can't do that, I can't... I, you know, I've got more, I've got to make more money out of the damn stuff, you know, at the end of the day. And yes, all right, I could put it online at 49.95 and, you know, equal Master of Malt and, and Native Spirits. Uh, and um, But it, most of our sales uh, are in the shop and I, I have to make a little bit more of a margin. And I, I couldn't justify that the... the I couldn't justify sort of like you know sixty nine ninety five, seventy two ninety five and seventy four ninety five and pretty much the same for um, the Sagmore spirits. They just they just don't work at those price points. And like I said, that with the with rye whiskies and um, bottling bond rye whiskies, to me the benchmark is um, the the Rittenhouse rye and um, and the price of it, not just the the, the quality. Um, and I don't. You know, I've got no issue at all with the quality of either of these distilleries. Like I said, it's all to, about pricing, and pricing um, to quality uh, is, is is it's a huge importance at the end of the day. You know, I've got to get behind a product, and if I don't feel the product is worth what I'm having to sell it for, then you know, how am I going to sell it? You know, I'm j just being honest here at the end of the day, um, and you know, I at the end. You you know if you guys want to try these then then brilliant go ahead and try them see what you think I would never stop anybody sort of you know uh, buying these and certainly in the, um, the 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 information below the video you will find a link to um, well you, you can go and find Master of Bloody Malt if you like I'm not going to put a bloody link to there the, the competition but you can I'll put a link to the, the other lot. Um, uh, whoever they were called um, anyway um, and so yeah okay uh, good fun uh, thank you Nathan for the, for the samples um, but you know like I said you know, if you want to try them then um, I'm afraid I will not be selling them but you know that's life isn't it um, so um, anyway that's this week's episode of the show in the bag um, uh, 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 I hope you enjoyed it I think Barbie's enjoyed it um, haven't you Barbie yeah no idea what I'll be doing next week oh no no pitch invasion um, so until then good afternoon and good dramming